Good morning, Foothills. So good to have you. I'm Rod. And I'm Bill. We're so glad to have you this morning. Uh, we had just a great, great service for you this morning. Uh, if you're a first-time guest, first of all, we want to say welcome. Yeah. Thank you for joining us this morning online. And if you could, we don't ask you to go to foothills.cc slash connect. Indicate that you're a first-time guest. We would love to send your free gift in your inbox. Fill the information out. Put your email in there. That way we can send you a free gift. Just to say thank you for joining us this morning. Church, we had a great Sunday last Sunday. Bill, can yeah. we talk about it? Wasn't it great? Man, it was so awesome. We had the, the horse troughs, holy horse troughs, maybe you want to call it. But we do things differently here in, in these horse troughs. We heat them up. And, man, we saw so much life change last Sunday morning. I think yes. was it was like 20 people about were 20, baptized. Yeah. yeah, I got baptized. We saw awesome. people spontaneously baptized, uh, you know, came to faith here at the church. And got baptized the same day, same same morning, same hour even. Yes, yes. And so, uh, man, we're so rejoicing that. And uh, we, we're going to see more of that today. Not baptisms, but we're going to see more life change. Yeah, and uh, Pastor Kevin's preaching this morning. Mm. He's got a great way. We're in a series called The Looking Glass. Yeah. So it's about seeing what God says about us, mm. not necessarily what we think about ourselves. Yeah. It's going to be really great. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, so we got coming up September 11th, we have our community group starting up, um, we're this fall and our connect groups, it's going to be great. Um, we got four different groups. We got a, a community group, resource group, interest group, and discipleship group. Lots uh, of groups. Yeah, a lot of yeah. groups. Anything uh, you want. Yes, absolutely. Much. So if you could go to foothills.cc slash groups. And look at all the groups that we have available. Me and Pastor Bill, we lead a group with our wives. Uh, it, it is one of the highlights yeah. uh, to be a part of a great community to it's, help us grow in Christ. Yeah, it's it's a way to make a large church smaller, right? Yes, you, yes. you get a group of people that you connect with, you do life with, um, and, and it's awesome. They become family. Yeah, yeah. and a lot. Of, and if you if you want to know any of the events that's coming, I want to encourage you to go to foothills.cc/events. Look at our calendar. You can find out all the things that's going on. We would love you to be a part of it and get connected with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. You know, when we think about our services here, um, and, and, and I know we're talking to a lot of people that are watching online from all over the place, right? That's yeah. what's so awesome yeah, about awesome. it. It could yes. be another country. It could be other states in the United States, all over the world. And uh, But something that we have in common is we're gathered to uh, point our direction toward the Lord. And uh, today... As we start, we're going to enter into worship. The worship team will come out. And, uh, man, here in the building, we sense the presence of God. Online, I know you will sense the presence of God. Yes, and and yes. Uh, what I encourage you today, and I know Rod feels the same way. Let me I'll break out the phone for a scripture. I don't have my old worn-out leather Bible here. <laughs> Are you like that, Rod? I got like 20 nice Bibles and one worn-out one. That's, yes, it's like an old leather recliner, that, you know, comfortable, Good to, and comfortable. To, to, to get yes, into. Yes. But I got the phone Bible today. So um, let me encourage you with this. You know, when you think about joining in the online service today, I encourage you to take part. In Psalm 63, it says this, Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. And so Amen. Amen. that's that's worship, you know, so I encourage you today. Sing along. The words are going to be on the screen. Uh, don't be afraid to lift your hands. Maybe if you're not a hand lifter in worship, do what David says there. Try lifting your hands yes, in worship yes. and in prayer today and uh, uh, do something new because uh, it's it's awesome. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And if you have any prayer requests, mm -hmm. uh, let us know. Again, go to uh, foothills.cc slash connect. Put your prayer request in there, and we will love to pray with you. We got a prayer team that will pray for you and serve you any way that we can. Yes, are you ready? I'm ready, man. Service All is right. about to start. It's gonna be awesome, Let's man. I cannot wait. Do it. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. So, hey, grab your coffee, your blanket, your favorite Bible, and kit back and enjoy the service. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Your history 
can prove there's nothing you can't do you're faithful and true Awesome is that? I always love Baptism Sunday. 20 people took their next steps in baptism last week. It was phenomenal. Hey, go ahead and grab a seat. Uh, my name is Drew Hammer. If I haven't met you before, I'm one of the pastors here on staff. So glad you're here. And if you are new with us, uh, especially if you're watching online and are new with us, we want to welcome you. Thanks for watching with us today. Uh, if you're watching online, you can go to foothills.cc slash connect. And you can go on there and fill out our online connection card, and we'll send you a free gift, and we want to get connected with you. Also, if you are new in the house today, we want to welcome you as well. Uh, we actually have a guest room as you walked in the front doors there. It's just to your right-hand side. Uh, you can go there, meet some of our staff, and uh, also get a free gift there too. So we'd love to meet you, get to know you, and get you connected here at Foothills. Um, so one of the things that is going on right now, there's lots of stuff happening, but... You guys saw 
um, an amazing thing that happened last week, and I just want to go back to that video. Uh, it was really special for me, especially. I got to baptize um, some of our friends. We got to baptize their two kids. I think they're actually in the back right now. But the cool thing about that is they are part of our community group. And if, um, if you don't know about community groups, that is our second family. We love our community group. And I think some of them are in the front rows here too. Um, but we love our community groups. And you're like, okay, I want to be part of that. I want to have somebody else in my life doing life with. Well, you're in luck. Because our next set of groups starts actually in two weeks. On September 11th, um, we have a bunch of groups that are starting. We have everything from resource groups, interest groups, community groups, all sorts of ways to get involved. So we want you guys to get online. Again, you can go to foothills.cc slash events and find out more about small groups and all the different events going on here. And speaking of events, we actually had something happen this weekend that we were really excited about. Our um, Kentucky disaster, I gotta say that right, our Kentucky disaster relief team actually was up in Kentucky this weekend. I just heard that they got back late last night, so they may either be sleeping or watching online. Hey, Kentucky team, if you're out there. Um, they did a phenomenal job. They, we got a whole team together. They headed out Thursday morning with a trailer full of supplies and got up there and ha got to help our community in Kentucky that we go to every year with our missions team. Um, so they went up there and they, I mean, yes. <laughs> They did all sorts of stuff. I can't wait till we give you guys updates on some of that stuff as we get pictures in, videos in, stories in from that. But what's really cool about all that is we didn't have to do anything extra. That all came from our normal giving because of how generous you guys are. So I would encourage you guys, keep this kind of stuff up because not only are we getting to be involved in the community, we also get to go outside these walls. We get to go all over the place and we get to serve others through your generosity. So I want to tell you three ways that you can continue to give. Um, you can go online, you can go through our app, or there's buckets on the way out of those doors right as you walk out. You can drop a, um, your giving into that as well. So if you guys have not enjoyed worship so far, this is, you guys are doing awesome. I am so excited about the rest of worship that's happening today. So I want to go ahead and pray over this and over the rest of our, our service here. God, we thank you. We love you so very much. And we thank you for this generous church that we all get to go out of these doors and serve our community and serve beyond that. God, we pray over the worship. God, we pray over Kevin as he brings the word. We love you and we pray this all in your name. Amen. Continue worshiping with us this morning.
We're just thankful this morning that that faithfulness is unwavering and that's all that we need. That's all we need to lean on. It's just that relationship with Jesus. So let's sing that out this morning.
Jesus, we just love your presence. You are so worthy of our praise. You are so faithful. You are so good. 
We just pray that you prepare our hearts for the message that we are about to receive and that you change our hearts and renew a right spirit within us. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Who am I? Some of the biggest questions in life are rooted in our identity. Some people easily discover their purpose and plan. While others find themselves on a difficult journey to self-awareness. We all want to know who we are, yet so many of us have a misconception of our true identity. Simply because we're looking to the wrong source. Fidel's, how are we doing? Good. Now, I, I remember it really clearly, like it, like it was yesterday, the first time that I was in pregame warm-ups on, on a Friday night under the lights. And somehow I waited until my junior year to get on the field. Up until that point, I had been a, a happy critic armchair quarterback from the comfort of the cold bleachers in the stands while I would watch. But the coach finally, finally convinced me going into my junior year to throw on pads and play. And so we're in the pregame warm-ups, and I'm in line, kind of running through the route tree. I've been training all summer with the offense to play wide receiver, and I remember very clearly hearing Coach call my nickname. Now, it was a nickname that I'd not had previously. Coach gave me this nickname. I'm about to tell you this nickname. It's the most intimidating nickname in all of football history. <laughs> Coach yells it out. He says, Crazy legs! Crazy legs. I know, it's really, really, really intimidating. It, it was a really good description because in high school, my junior year, I was about 140 pounds when I was soaking wet. Uh, our school didn't have a massive budget, so my pads were well oversized, okay? I have a small head, so my helmet looked well oversized, and I have very, very thin legs, okay? So I looked like candy for linebackers in the game, all right? But... What I had going for me was my speed, okay? So if, if you're hitting me, I'm going down very easy, but you gotta catch me first. So coach calls, crazy legs, get over here. So I run over, and during pregame warmups, we had another player go down with an injury, one of our skilled outside uh, players that went down, and he needed me to step in and play safety. I mean, this is game one, all right? And I would end up playing defense throughout the year, but all summer, I hadn't been training with the defense, and, and he's asking me to play safety, and he's, he's letting me know, I'm not expecting you to go, you know, hit somebody really hard, because we both know you can't. He didn't say that, but that's how I felt, you know. <laughs> he's like, I'm wanting you to use the crazy legs, all right? I want you to play center field, and I want you to go up and get the ball at the highest point. And so I just knew there was an opportunity, and I had an assignment. And the nickname that he gave me, both gave me uh, confidence. I, I felt confidence from him. But it also came with a responsibility, like, I better go out there and let my speed do some talking. Today, we're continuing our series, Through the Looking Glass, and we've been looking at identity and looking at who we are, but today, what I want to look at is why we are here, because that plays in to us allowing God to use who he made us to be. And while Jesus was here, there was actually an, it was an opportune time for his people to step up into the function of who he made them to be. And so he gave them this description or a nickname, if you will, at this Sermon on the Mount that's a famous sermon that Jesus gave to charge his Christ followers. So let's go to the book of Matthew. If you've got your Bibles, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 5 today. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is it if salt has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. Jesus lets his followers know that they have a function or a role, a description 
that he is calling them to, to be salt in the middle of this day in their generation. But salt was only useful while it had its saltiness. So while this was a privilege to have a role and a responsibility as a Christ follower, it was also a weight and a responsibility that, that had to be walked out so that we, we didn't lose this. Last week, Pastor Greg talked about the importance of not living to please people, but living to please God, which is an incredible message for us to hold tight. But when we choose to honor God, part of our function is that God allows us honoring him to be, in a way, pleasing to people, to draw them to something better that they can't find out in the world. Hence, this saltiness, this saltiness that, that causes people to lean in and want more. I really like the message translation of this verse in this sermon. It says this, let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and it'll end up in the garbage. We have an opportunity and a responsibility to be the salt of the earth, but that comes with a desire and a commitment to remain salty. So I want you to do something. I want you to look at your neighbor, and I just want you to ask him, are you salty today? Come on, ask him. Are you salty today? Go to the other side. Say, are you salty today? Go ahead and tell, you better leave here salty today. <laughs> I want to tell you about the times that Jesus is living in. Like when he comes in, I want to tell you what's going on kind of socially in the world. I promise none of this will sound familiar to the day and age that we're in. None of it will sound familiar. There was social disunity going on while Jesus was there. There was political unrest going on while Jesus was there. There were people struggling for power while Jesus was there. The government wasn't solving problems. Even religious people and religious institutions weren't solving problems. It seemed everywhere people turned, they were waiting. Like this was, a, this was a period of time where people were waiting on God to return in faithfulness. At the end of the Old Testament, before Jesus' arrival, there was over 400 years of waiting on the next sign of God, and there was so much debate about who Jesus was anyways. Like some people believed that he was the deliverance of God's promise, but others were still waiting. And while they were waiting, they were looking for anywhere they could place their faith in this world, but they couldn't find a place to place their faith in this world because people were not faithful. Government was not faithful. Religious institutions were not faithful. Even in family units, there was a struggle to find faithfulness. Doesn't sound anything like our world, right? People, all people, long for someone or something to place their faith in. Each of you you long for something or someone to place your faith in. Think about what a lack of faithfulness adds to your life, the instability that takes place when there's a lack of faithfulness in a marriage, how unstable things get. Think about when there's a lack of faithfulness in, in any type of relationship or friendship, when there's a lack of faithfulness in your workplace, when there's a lack of faithfulness in leaders, there is instability, instability that is going on and taking place. And this is where we insert in this time Jesus giving this charge to his followers to say, I want you to be the salt seasoning that draws people to godliness because there's a lot of faithlessness going on out there, but God is the one true faithful God, and Jesus was the arrival of his faithfulness. People needed a place to place their faith because faith gives us hope. When we don't have faith, we struggle to find hope. Look at what Hebrews says in chapter 11. It says, faith shows the reality of what we, what's that word, what we? Let's try it again. Faith shows the reality of what we? It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Where there is no faith, there is no hope. 
But Jesus arrives to charge his followers who are seeing that this is the arrival of God's faithfulness to show people the hope of the world. And this is an opportunity. When people could not find a place to place their faith, this was an opportunity for the salt seasoning, the saltiness of Jesus' followers to stand out. And it's the charge, not just of his followers then, but it's the charge of you and I who've chosen to follow Jesus now. And so today, I wanna look at two really simple ways that you and I can stay salty. How do we stay salty? It is so important to why we are here, that we remain salty. These are two simple ideas. And listen, if you're here and, and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you may agree when I give you these two ideas, you may be like, yeah, you know what? If I found that out there, if somebody would deliver on these two things, I would agree. That's pretty, that's pretty salty and that would cause me to lean in. And I bet you're looking for this more than you even realize. How do we stay salty? Number one, Simple, y'all. Honest speech is salty. Simple, not always easy. Honest speech is salty. When, when Jesus gave this message, salt, it was a valuable resource, a very valuable resource. And what they would do is they would extract it sometimes from the Dead Sea. And in order for the, for the most effective salt to be used, they would end up scraping off the outer layer because what would happen to the outer layer is it would get exposed to other elements. There would be other elements, particles, chemicals, and matter that would kind of come in and combine with the salt. And as other matter kind of got exposed to the salt, it would dilute the saltiness. The saltiness would be diluted and its function would be less. There would be less of that salt seasoning taste that would go on. So what they would do is they would scrape it off because they wanted the most pure, raw, true salt to be able to use because that would be the one that would be the saltiest. The same is true with our speech. I mean, think about it. When we start adding things to what is true, we start to dilute the truth, right? When we start to add selfish motives, when we start to exaggerate the story, or as Pastor Greg was talking about, when we're trying to please people, and that's behind the motive, or when we start to add false testimony, we start adding to the elements of truth, the honest speech starts to get diluted and lose its saltiness. Honest speech right now in our world is so diluted. <laughs> I mean, would you agree? Would you agree? Like, we are on a hunt for truth around us. It's so hard to know what's true. We can't find it by turning on the TV or the news. It feels like that has been so diluted. In a lot of relationships, there's been so much diluted in the way that we talk to one another. The way that, that, we, that we carry conversation, honesty has been lost. So many leaders have been dishonest. So many politicians have been dishonest. And, and what's happening is our, world's, our world is reacting. Like we're taking in content and entertainment differently than we were 10 or 15 years ago. The truth is like 10 or 15 years ago, we would react to something that was polished or looked excellent or was produced and, and the wow factor would literally draw people in. This is amazing. Today, like this next generation coming up, they're not moved by the polish. What's polishing speech is not impressive. Production is not impressive. People are not moved by how produced something is. They're moved by truth. They're moved by how honest something is. People are hungry for truth. They've always been. This is what it says in Proverbs. It says an honest answer is like a warm hug. An honest answer is like a warm hug. And Paul would continue to charge in the New Testament in Colossians saying this. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive 
so that you will have the right response for everyone. There's another translation that literally describes that as letting your conversation or your speech be seasoned with salt. To be seasoned with salt. Honest speech is salty. It draws people in to want more. And people are longing for honest speech in our world. Number two, again, simple, but not always easy. A trustworthy lifestyle is salty. A trustworthy lifestyle is salty. Part of the function of salt was to be a seasoning, right? That would bring out more into the flavor, but part of salt's purpose at this day and time was to preserve things. It it would preserve meat. This was before there was freezers or ways for meat to keep from decaying. They would would put salt on things. This was was a preserving factor. The, The effectiveness of the salt would be tied to how it was able to stand the test of time. And and the same is true with our saltiness in our lifestyle. As Christ followers, our influence should be one that continues on and, and does not decay. Because honest speech by itself is not enough when it's not backed up with action. Even when honest speech has good intentions, when it's not backed up by action, it's not powerful. Honest speech is a great thing. But the action that backs up what you said tells me that you meant it, right? When there's just speech and nothing backing it up, it tells me that you didn't actually mean what you said in the first place, and it dilutes the whole process. It takes down the saltiness. We see this all the time in leaders who put high hopes out there of things that they're going to accomplish, but when they don't back it up, we kind of take a step back and it, and it loses its effectiveness. In a marriage where there's been cracks in the relationship and someone's saying, I'm, I'm sorry, and I, you know, I, I'm gonna get it right next time, but then there's never an effort to change, it starts to dilute the saltiness in that relationship. A trustworthy lifestyle is salty, and it says that you meant the things that you said. This is what it says in the book of James about actions, backing up the things we say that we believe. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, goodbye, have a good day, stay warm, eat well, but then you do not give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. There's that useless terminology, that that salt losing its saltiness, losing its usefulness to be able to show people that you're meaning what you say when you're placing your faith in God and ultimately displaying that he is a God who follows through on the things that he says. And we can apply this, this truth about faith being backed up by our actions to anything. It doesn't have to just be faith in God. When we say we have faith in something or someone, but our actions don't back it up, we're not really walking in that faith. And what we say has has been diluted, but especially, especially for those of us who follow Jesus. Especially for those of us who follow Jesus. We have a privilege to be salty, but a responsibility to be salty that our lifestyle would be one points to him. This is what it says in Titus. Such people claim they know God, but they deny him by the way they live. They're detestable, disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. There it is again. It's like it loses its usefulness within the kingdom. Losing the usefulness to draw people to God. When someone is honest in their speech, and they have a lifestyle that's trustworthy. We have a way that we describe people like that. We call them a man or a woman of integrity. That's how we would describe them. We would say that someone who who is honest when they talk 
and lives out a trustworthy lifestyle that they are a man or woman of integrity. As we look around our world today, as we look around the state of things, people are looking for integrity. People are longing for integrity. They're looking for integrity anywhere they can find it. And they're questioning integrity everywhere. We're, we're kind of in an age of skepticism and cynicism because it feels like we can't seem to find integrity, whether, whether, again, it's in an organization or a structure or a school or a government, or listen, even in the churches. We're seeing this left and right where churches that have had influence in our world are having trouble because of a lack of integrity and the world's watching and has big questions about this because integrity is dropping. People are longing for a place that they can place their integrity. Even right now, people are questioning the integrity of the dollar. <laughs> like how is the dollar gonna stand the test of time? People are questioning the integrity of things that they've put their hope and their life and, and their purpose and, and future in. Like how is that going to stand the test of time? When I sit and think about the world that, that we're in, and especially when I sit and I think about this as a dad, and I, and I think about the world that, that my daughters, that my daughters are, are gonna be raised in, the challenges that they're going to face, I can really get overwhelmed. <laughs> like I, I can really sit and get overwhelmed by all the opposition that's out there, and like wondering, like what, what's, what is, what's gonna be the best shot for my daughters? And I can start trying to figure out, like how, how can I fix this? How, how can I be a part of like fixing all of this? Because it feels like, it feels like things are, are, are falling left and right. What do we do? And honestly, as I'm praying through this message and, and studying this passage and studying the times that Jesus came in, I want you to know something. This is not the first time that the world has had a lack of integrity. This is not going to be the last time that the world has a lack of integrity. And instead, just like my coach calling me out, like crazy legs, it's the time right now. There's a player down, there's an opportunity. Jesus was charging his followers, saying, there's an opportunity right now. The greater the adversity that's happening out in the, our world, like the more and more that integrity is falling left and right, a lack of integrity is on display. Church, we have an opportunity to step up and be men and women of integrity and be the saltiness that Jesus designed us to be. If I could sum up the whole message today just in a sentence for you, just something to, to keep chewing on and thinking about as, as you leave here later, I would just say this, integrity is the saltiness that our world is craving. I'll say it again, integrity, integrity is the saltiness that our world is craving. Consider how much integrity means to you. Consider for a moment how much integrity means in your marriage. Consider how much integrity means in, in your friendships. Consider how much integrity means in your family. If, if you're a son or a daughter, you're thinking of your parents, like integrity is so life-giving. And a lack of integrity is so unstable. Consider what integrity means within the organizations that you're a part of or the workplace that you're in or the schools that you're in. Consider how much integrity means. See, Jesus calls us to be men and women of integrity, to be the saltiness that would draw us to him because he is full of integrity. 
he would finish this sermon, Matthew 5, 16, by saying this, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So that everyone will, like the purpose of this, salt is not the main course. Let me just tell you that. Salt is not the main course. Even when it comes to our purpose, why you're here, you're not the main character of this story. Jesus is. You are the salt seasoning that draws people to their need in him. Because the truth is, Jesus was the only one who lived a perfect, fully integrated life. Jesus is God coming to earth saying, I'm following through on every promise I've made. God made a promise to mankind that he would save them from their sin and the sin of this world. And Jesus was that walking in action. That was the trustworthiness in action. That was the lifestyle in action. And Jesus lived as we live with the same temptations that we live with, but he walked in integrity perfectly. And as a result, he didn't deserve any of the consequences that come with sin, but he chose to wear the consequences on the cross to take our punishment so that whoever wants to believe in him, he will be the integrity that your heart is craving and that my heart is craving. He created you to crave this integrity so that he could be this integrity for you. Foothills, this world is craving integrity because this world is craving Jesus. And we have a time in history with such an incredible opportunity to be men and women of integrity that would draw him. We've been walking through this series, again, talking about who we are, who we are. You can't change who God made you to be. See, what Jesus said about the salt, he didn't say if it loses its saltiness, it's no longer salt. He just said it loses its usefulness. What would happen with the salt is when it, when, when it would lose its usefulness or saltiness, it'd be thrown on the ground. And, and what they would do at this time, they didn't really have gravel at this time in history, so they would throw it on walking paths that would kind of keep weeds away where people could walk on it, and it would, it, that, that would be the new purpose, but it would lose its usefulness in order to kind of serve up the main course of Jesus. That, that was the purpose. Of, but again, it's still salt, even while it's on the ground. You could do everything you want. We talked about it in this series. You could do everything you want or you think in order to try to change who God made you to be. You could, you could do a bunch of things to change who God made you to be, but you can't change who God made you to be. Like, I'm sorry, I'm crazy legs. I got thin legs and oversized pads. That's who God made me to be. That's, that's the hand I was dealt. But here's the truth. Here's the truth. This is what Jesus is wanting them to see, the usefulness here. You can't change who God made you to be, but church, we can waste who God made us to be. You can't change who God made you to be, but you can waste who God made you to be. We have such an opportunity right now. Now, I think it's important that we spend a moment talking about the fact that myself included, none of us in this room have lived lives full of 100% integrity. This is where I want to make sure that that we're getting the truth of the gospel and not, not shame, <laughs> okay? Because all of us have fallen short in this area. All of us have lost our effectiveness at times in our life where we've, where we've diluted our speech or where we've not followed through in lifestyle where we have fallen short. But the good news about Jesus is that he came to redeem the things that are broken. He came to make useful the things that were once useless. And a life of integrity is an opportunity that you and I have to start right now. Like the saltiness that maybe you didn't have yesterday, you have the opportunity to have that saltiness today. If you have given your life to Jesus, the same spirit that was in him that helped him walk with integrity is in you and can help you take steps today towards saltiness. 
And it can be in two simple ways, the honest speech and the trustworthy lifestyle. It could be so salty if today you sat and thought, okay, Lord, like where am I needing to circle back around and be real and honest? Is there someone that I need to call and apologize to? Is there somewhere that I'm withholding truth from you, God, that you want me to confess? Like, is there a sin that you want me to confess and get out on the table and and be honest with you? God, if I've hurt someone, do, do I go to that person? Or Lord, is there someone that I need to forgive that I could take a step of an honest moment and forgive an individual? Is there something that I've, I've withheld truth in an area or I've, I've muddied down or diluted the truth that I need to circle back and I need to make it right and I need to make it honest? That's a step towards integrity. That's a step towards the saltiness that this world's craving. And then with the lifestyle, Lord, is there something that I haven't been following through on that I said I would do? Is there an area that you want me to take a step to follow through and allow you to use my steps of trustworthiness to show your redemption in my life, to ultimately show the saltiness that points us to this one true faithful God? Integrity is the saltiness that this world is craving foothills, we have such a good opportunity. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus, it's possible that part of your struggle with trusting Jesus has been that you've struggled because there's been men and women who claim to know God, but they weren't men and women of integrity. Maybe they fell short in being real with you. Maybe they hurt you. Maybe their lifestyle looked nothing like what you've, what you've heard when you've heard about who God is. And so you've just kind of, you've kind of struggled and you've said, well, I'm looking for integrity out there. I'm, I'm looking for this in relationships. I'm looking for it in institutions. I, I tried religion. I tried it, but I, I just can't seem to find it in anyone or in anything. And what I would tell you is this. I think there's a reason that God uses humans that are less than perfect to be his vessel, to be the ones he would use. Because even as we're trying and we trip and fall, what happens when we trip and fall is God continues to show us. He continues to show us that there is no man, woman, institution, government, amount of money, lifestyle, there is no one or nothing, no other kingdom who can save you from your sins. Like no other king or kingdom can satisfy the craving that is ultimately in your heart, which only Jesus can do. And so where men and women have failed you, see that as the opportunity for God to be drawing you, saying it wasn't gonna be them to save you anyways. Like they were pointing you to me, but let me show you something. I still have grace for them, and I've got grace for you. And I want a relationship with you. And and I've delivered. Jesus is the delivery of God's promise. And today, you could give your life to Jesus. We're gonna pray right now. And if you want to give your life to Jesus, you might just pray a prayer like this. Jesus, I need you. My soul is craving who you are. My soul is craving a relationship with you, even if I haven't been able to put it into words. I need you. Jesus, I thank you for your integrity. I thank you that you lived a perfect life. I thank you that that you are the man and the God of integrity that my heart has always longed for. But I thank you that you took my sacrifice on the cross. And so Jesus, today, today, because of the power of your resurrection, because of the power of what you have accomplished, I ask you to save me from my sins. 
be my savior. And I commit to follow you from this day forward. And Lord, for the rest of us in here, for those of us that are already following you, Lord, I pray that you would inspire us. Lord, that we would live, leave here inspired to live lives of integrity. Lord, so that we can have the saltiness that you've called us to, so that we can walk in why we are here. Lord, we know, we know, God, that you did a good thing when you created us. And so, Lord, we don't want to be men and women who waste that opportunity. We want to take advantage of that opportunity. For your kingdom and your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow, Rod, what an awesome Man. service. Right? Yes. Uh, Ke- Kevin brings it every time, um, and, and this, is, this is no exception. I think um, uh, God continues to use him, bringing a message that's relevant to, to everyone that watches online, everyone that's in our auditorium. Yes, and yes, and uh, maybe today that message resonated with you in your heart, in your spirit, and, and, and we're a church that want, we want to know about that, you know, yes, um, yes. it's important to, to let people know if you're going through something, it's important to, to let us know if you made a decision today of, of any kind, maybe you recommitted your life to Christ or you came to faith in Christ for the very first time in your life, like, uh, some of the people last Sunday, uh, well, we'd love to know about that. And, and the way that you can tell us what's going on, including prayer requests that yes, you might have. Yeah, is, is uh, Again, go to foothills.cc slash connect. There's a connect card that you can click on. And it, uh, it has some questions on there that, that you can answer about a decision that you made. And maybe if you have some prayer requests, we have a, a prayer team of prayer warriors that pray over requests throughout the week. And, uh, and our staff, we pray over your requests. So we don't take those lightly. Uh, we find them that, yeah. that, that are very important, and we believe God moves through prayer, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. God definitely moves through prayer. And, again, uh, if you follow us on our social, all our social media outlets, uh, Facebook, Instagram, follow us. Keep up with all what's going on. We will keep you up to date. Again, if you want to find out what's going on, go to foothills.cc slash events. Look at the calendar. Hey, guys, we love you. Me and Bill, we're so thankful for you joining us today. And have a great day, and we love you. God bless you.